Welcome back to Mojo Grip, Mike here. Today we're gonna spend some time to talk about the Rotax 915, which is the engine that's gonna be in the Mojo Sling. So if you've watched enough videos on this channel, we've probably been through a few aircraft that uses the Rotax, but very few that actually uses the Rotax 915. Again, this is the same power plant that will be in the Mojo Sling. If you're new to the channel, I've been building a four-seater Sling TSI airplane. And what a lot of you may not know is that one of the big factors or perhaps one of the reasons that I chose to build a Sling TSI to begin with is because of this. And speaking of the Sling TSI, I'm actually standing right next to my airplane right now. This is what's been built so far of the Mojo Sling. So again, what I really like to do today is to take some time to give you some really cool details about this engine. Generally speaking, if you're going the experimental route to build your airplane, the good thing is you have a lot of choices when it comes to your power plant. So, and normally an airplane manufacturer or kit builder would have the kit built around a specific power plant. That's typically how it goes. But as a builder, you can always find and choose whichever power plant you want as long as the power to weight ratio is good, which is the first thing we're gonna talk about. So when it comes to the Rotax 915 or the Rotax in general, actually to give you a little bit of background, Rotax as an engine company, they've been around for quite some time. And initially Rotax built engines for land and watercraft. So your snowmobiles, your boats, things like that. And eventually they got into building aircraft engines. And so what we have now as a matter of fact if you look at a lot of the light sport aircraft out there most likely they use a Rotax the Rotax 912 which is somewhat of the standard uh, for 100 horsepower engines and the reason why the Rotax is very popular with light aircraft is because one it's certified but also again when you think of that power to weight ratio these engines are very light this engine as it is right now weighs about 185 pounds and it has a maximum power output of 141 horsepower. And so the way you get that is you have a turbocharger, which I'll go through a little bit later. So this engine has a turbocharger and that's what gives you that max uh, range of power. And it's a great fit for the Sling TSI because it's light and it's economical. This engine only burns very little amount of fuel compared to the legacy engine. So the first thing I like to talk about actually is the turbocharger itself, which is right here. So as I said, this engine is equipped with a turbocharger and it's also direct fuel injection, which is completely managed by a computer. So what a turbocharger helps you with is that it allows you to maintain maximum power as you climb. So with the 915, you have maximum power all the way up to 15,000 feet. You start off at sea level at 141 horsepower, and then after a while, it cools down to about 135 horsepower, and then you maintain that 135 all the way up to 15,000. Now I can tell you, more than likely, no one is gonna be flying this airplane to 15,000 feet. Your normal mission for this airplane is probably between 6,000 and maybe 9,000 feet. I can say that for my own personal use. So you've got an awesome power range available to you all the way up to altitude if you do need it. So how do you actually get that efficiency with this turbocharger? So if I open this here, and so say your standard engine or standard turbocharger, for example, you would have air and the air that this takes in and sends back up into the engine, typically it's warmer. But with the intercool system, that air gets cooled, which makes it a lot more dense. And so when you send that air back up into the engine, you're putting out a lot more energy. If you understand some of the basics in weather, which you'll learn when you learn how to fly, you understand that warm air is less dense than cool air. And so when you send warm air into the engine, you may be getting some boost, but you're not getting the maximum amount of boost. But when you send cool air, which is more dense, back into that engine, you're getting a lot more energy put back in. All right, so that's how this works and why this is a lot more efficient. And let me close this cover back. And then also speaking of the cooling system, another cool feature of the 915 is that it has a dual cooling system. Now when you compare this to your legacy engine, you would have either liquid cool or air cooled. I trained a Diamond DA40 for example, and that airplane has 
an air cold engine, the Lycom and IO360. As a matter of fact, whenever we were training, they would always tell you, if you feel your temperatures are getting too high, what you want to do is you put the nose down to let the engine breathe. So with this engine, you have the liquid coal, have the coolant in there, but also you have air cold, both working together. And I'll show you how that works. So the liquid coolant, they're both for your cylinders, right? But the liquid coolant is for the cylinder head and the air coolant is for the actual cylinder. So when this engine is operating, your actual cylinders are not getting as much heat as the cylinder head itself. And so the liquid coolant part cools the head and you have the air cooling for the cylinders. But the fact that you have both makes this engine a lot more efficient. And remember, there's a computer that's calculating a ton of things for you, so everything works efficiently. And now, speaking of that computer, the Rotax 915 has an ECU. You see here, it says ECU. This ECU has been updated. So this is a computer unit, and this engine has a bunch of sensors around, which makes this engine a FADEC. FADEC stands for Full Authority Digital Engine Control. So what that means for the pilot is less workload. Normally with your legacy engines, you have to manage your engine in the cockpit here. But with this unit, all of that is done for you. And I think that's one of the things that makes this engine special. Now this engine has a lot going for it, which also translates to maintenance. When you think of a turbocharger engine, you think, okay, I need to maintain the turbocharger. I need to be able to maintain all of the electronic unit on this thing. So you may think you have to do a whole lot when it comes to your maintenance, but you don't. For your maintenance, you're doing your normal oil change and you change your oil, your oil filter at 100 hours, actually depending on the type of fuel that you use, which I should also mention, the Rotax 915 and all Rotax engine takes car gas. So if you can find car gas at your local airport, this engine will take it. As a matter of fact, Rotax loves car gas better than it likes 100 low lead, if you can believe that. So if you can find car gas, which is a lot cheaper, this engine will take it. So at 100 hours, you change your oil and oil filter. At 200 hours, you change the spark plugs. And another maintenance down the line is at 600 hours, which you check your gearbox. And that's just an inspection to see how everything is going. Now, do you have to maintain the turbocharger itself? The verdict is you don't. Again, you have such a beautiful system here where everything is working seamlessly together. That takes away from you having to spend more money on maintenance. And I'll tell you the reason why. When it comes to this turbocharger, or let's say, any turbocharger. When you think of your turbochargers in a sports car, if you were building an aftermarket sports car, you slap a turbocharger in there. The reason why sometimes things can go bad or you require more maintenance on those turbochargers is you bitten it up pretty good. Imagine you built a sport car, you take it on the track or you're racing with it. That turbocharger is getting beat up pretty good. But with this engine, that's not happening. This engine has a wastegate. So again, with the ECU computing all the data for you, it knows the right amount of boost that you need at every phase of flight. So you're not just getting a thousand percent of boost kicking in all the time. If that's happening, that engine is gonna get a lot of heat and you'll have more power than you need at different flight phases. And that's where the computer comes in. It calculates the right amount of power that you need at each phase of flight. And the reason it's able to do that actually is the propeller that this engine uses, which is a constant speed. When you think of a constant speed prop, it's like driving a manual gearbox. Except with airplanes or this particular engine, you have three different gears. So when you think about how these three gears will work, you have the computer calculating your data for you. So take for example at takeoff where you need your maximum amount of power, the right amount of data is calculated so this turbocharger puts out the max amount of power for you. Now you get to climb, you switch the controller inside, again the computer lets the turbocharger know the right amount of boost to supply the engine. And then when you get to your cruise, which you need less power than you did at takeoff or climb, 
that unit also calculates the data and lets the turbocharger know, hey, we don't need to be putting out a thousand percent of boost at this phase of flight. So what happens is you have this wastegate that lets off extra energy or extra boost that you don't need. So the engine and the turbocharger to be more particular is not getting beat up or working overtime all the time. And what that translates to is this turbocharger needs very little maintenance and the lifespan is more sustainable because you're not bidding it up constantly. And so all of these working together is what creates such an efficient engine. So when you think of the 915, in my opinion, this is the most technologically advanced engine out there when it comes to a single engine aircraft. And when you compare it to your legacy engines, it, to me, this there's very little to compare. It's just so much more advanced than your typical Lycoming or Continental engine. And it's more fuel efficient, it's more manageable, less maintenance, and the list goes on. Now, I would say one of the things that I don't like about this engine is the exhaust note. So if you've ever flown behind a road tax, these engines uses high RPMs. So the sound and the tone you get from the exhaust is, is different from your standard legacy engine. That may be the only thing that I don't like about this engine, but when I think of all the other stuff that I'm getting with the tech, with the efficiency, that seems very minute. One good thing is that you know you're gonna be flying around a quiet engine. And that, guys, is my detailed review of the Rotax 915 engine. I hope you keep watching because different phases of building, we're gonna be testing this engine. And once we complete the build, you see just how nicely this thing flies. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to give a thumbs up. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel with notification bell on. Again, my name is Mike. Thank you so much for watching. Great way to support the channel is by becoming a patron or you can become an MVP member on the website. The link is in the description below. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me and I will catch you on the next video. Peace.